What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. Today, I'm going to be chatting with Steven. He's known on Instagram as PPE Common Rail, and we had him on about three years ago to talk about taking his Ford OBS, and he swapped from a 7.3 to a 5.9, and his goals then, and also how much it has changed since then. He's hit some really, um, really awesome dyno numbers at track time, so we wanted to catch up with him, learn more about the truck, and also chat with him about his 6.7 Power Stroke tow rig and his thoughts on having that for a few years. Before we get to it, though, I want to remind you guys you can save 20% off on Kershaw Knives. Just go to kershaw.kiausa.com. Use code DIESEL20. You get 20% off site-wide. they got a ton of different choices. No matter what your budget is or what kind of knife you may need, whether it's for everyday carry or something for hunting, fishing, around the house, at the job site, got a ton of choices. So make sure and take advantage of 20% off Kershaw Knives. Also, if you're listening to this on YouTube... If you find the content that we're providing helpful, love hearing the stories from the guests, make sure you subscribe, turn on the notifications, like the videos, comment on them. That helps us grow tremendously on there and reach new diesel truck owners or people who are looking to find information. And it goes a, a incredibly long way to you know being, being able to help us spread the education and some of the lessons and the technical information that we talk about on the podcast. All right, let's get to today's podcast with Steven and learning more about his truck and also his 6.7 Power Stroke tow rig. Steven, welcome back to the Diesel Podcast. I look forward to chatting with you today. I always like talking with guests who've been on and, uh, you know, we discuss their builds and then they've updated them or, you know, been out there racing or going on on to dynos and, and getting their feedback and, and stuff. So I look forward to chatting with you. Yeah, man, absolutely. I'm excited. Now, for our listeners who didn't catch our first episode we did a couple years back. Tell us a bit about the uh, Ford OBS and the common rail swap and and your setup on it. Yeah, so it's a 1995 Ford F-250 extended cab long bed. Um, I thought I pushed the 7.3 to pretty much its ragged limits um, without going completely wild on a budget. And I ended up pulling the the cord on that one at about just under 700 horsepower with a just a whiff of nitrous and um i ended up building a 5.9 common rail for it where you know my original goal was about 800 horsepower and i ended up breaking it in very very close to 1000 horsepower you know i was just over 900 horsepower and that originally had like you know, that, that blew my mind. That was, that was so cool. You know, uh, anything that kind of power is just, you know, for me coming from a seven, three, that was like, that was mind blowing. So I ended up running that truck for about a year and I really wanted that thousand horsepower. Um, so I ended up going a a little bit budget minded, but, uh, kind of wild. So, I mean, I ended up doing, um, it was an Oh six, five, nine, with um, stock displacement, triple CP3s, but high RPM mods from TC Diesel, uh, some extra T500 percents, uh, an S480 with uh, uh, like a VS Racing 102. And I think when we left off, I was getting ready to go to King of Street. Um, I had just live tuned with Firepunk, and I had clicked off a, a hair under uh 1400 horsepower i think it was 1372 i mean it, it ran incredible um ended up having some slight transmission issues and i didn't get to make it to king of street in 2019 um so i got all my transmission issues resolved for 2020 when i jumping on with sam weiss transmissions um we made it to you know about a year of testing and I had a lot of good luck with the truck. I thought I had a really bomb proof setup. Um, I mean, there was rods, there was a girdle, there was 14 mil head studs. Um, a lot of the things that you need, like fire rings, you know, five, six months of almost zero issues in a swap truck is, you know, making that kind of power was, um, you know, it's kind of difficult, but impressive. Yeah. So, Fast forward to 2020, uh, King of Street. Um, I got in there fairly early, get teched in. Uh, we go do our first couple passes, and then you know, truck was doing all right. It was a uh, 7 0. I mean, it's kind of slug off the line, but it, it was consistent 7 0s at 
you know, about 112 out the back um, in the eighth. So, I mean, it, it was running healthy. Um, my first round of eliminations, um, it was a sad one. <laughs> so I have a, um, a U.S. shift quick four, and I think it was on my part. I had a, a wire ground out or something. I was at the end of the track on my first round of eliminations. Uh, about 105, she downshifted to, I think, second gear. And the over-rev, man, was so wild, it took out everything. Wow. <laughs> um, trans got hurt, uh, smoked some clutches. I mean, the block nearly cut in half because, I mean, it had some apex triple beam rods. I mean, they were pretty stout. Um, I mean, I'm there was total carnage. I mean, I didn't make it all that long uh at that event i mean i was i was pretty sad <laughs> i'm not gonna lie um we well, put in all that time and effort and and testing and bringing it all together and then something like that happens you know it'd be tough oh yeah it, it was heartbreaking i mean I, I had every man hour and that motor was me i mean hand porting polishing valve jobs like everything we had a one-off side draft like it, it was a really cool looking motor uh, i had some unique parts on it and um after it came apart i mean the ride home from ohio was you know it's about eight hours you know i was pretty salty about the whole thing uh super sad um i just didn't know what i wanted to do i was like do i build another five nine do i try a six seven cummins i mean i was leaning towards that and i was like maybe i, I gotta start changing pistons to keep my 500 percent in that spray pattern so i had some ideas um about a week later I ended up coming across an ad for a DNJ, uh, DNJ Precision Enforcer 6.7 motor um, that was coming out of the old XDP monster truck. The guy was pulling the plug on that truck. He wanted to build something else, so he just had this motor. I was like, wow, that is a smoking deal. I mean, it's it's got everything you could possibly want for you know goals of 2,000 horsepower and above. So we struck a deal. I took that home. I changed the turbos. I uh, went into an S485 with a 106 on for turbos. I did a 14 mil and a 12 mil from Exergy. I did the whole Exergy rail, same 500%. Um, stuck it in the motor. Or, sorry, stuck it all together, put the motor in the truck. Something didn't quite sound right. He said it was good to go, but, uh, you know, the... the there was there was something going on there, so pulled the injectors back out. I ended up scoping the holes, and it had uh, two burnt pistons and three really hurt holes. I mean, it ran good, but it was you could tell it was it was off. So I uh, ended up sending the motor back to D and J, had them go back over it, um, and that was. I mean, it's not the first enforcer by any means, but it was it was some of the first few uh made so i mean it had a lot of really cool parts i mean a full roller cam uh billet mains i mean it, it had pretty much the works you can buy from dnj they ended up doing new sleeves uh total rebuild on it and so i get that back ready for 2021 i do a bunch of testing uh i end up live tuning with uh, Firepunk, they got that thing dialed in about 1800 horsepower. And I mean, it was a ripper, man. It was, it was just absolutely, it was a blast. Uh, it was just so rewarding. And I, I got it ready for King of Street 2021. And I mean, that was a banger, man. That was, that was so much fun. I mean, I didn't place top five. I just wanted to make it. And I made it with almost no issues. I mean, it was quick. Uh, we won uh, the, the bracket class. I was running 620s um, consistently on tune two. So, Stephen, I, I wanted to go back just for a brief second to the, the 7.3 because I know those have come a long way. But when you were hitting, you know, about 700 horsepower, was it, um, it, it did the engine like have a failure and that's what really kind of spurred the, the come and swap? Or you were just aiming for you know 1300 1400 1800 horsepower and you knew hey this other platform will provide me say more upside to be able to get to you know closer to 2000 horsepower uh to be honest i was super humble at 600 horsepower i thought it was the coolest thing um 
but I mean, times were kind of changing. You see daily drivers with a thousand horsepower and that, you know, kind of makes you peek your eye a little bit. Um, I just kind of sat down one day and I mean, there was no failures with the motor by any means. I mean, it ran great. Um, I mean, that, that had pretty much everything you could do besides, you know, a, a decent sized cam or ported heads. But I mean, um, it had big injectors, uh, twin oil pumps. I mean, it had tons of different tuners to try and make power. I mean, it ran great. It's just, um, I just kind of sat down one day. I was like, man, I got like, you, you know, the, I got a boatload of cash into this motor and it's not as friendly to drive on the street. It's not quiet. You know, I was getting a little bit older, you know, in your 20, early 20s, you know, uh, lumpy, smoky uh, truck that's, you know, pretty snotty was was what you, everyone wanted. And then, you know, get into your later 20s and you're like, wow i kind of want a muffler on my truck who am i (laughs) so i mean i ended up uh just kind of sat down it's like you know i've got this much money into it and it's not really worth 600 horsepower to me you know everyone else that's doing it you know awesome keep doing it but for me my goals just kind of changed and you know i only wanted eight nine hundred horsepower if that i thought that would have been you know the end all be all but you know it just the horsepower bug just it never goes away man <laughs> it's interesting how it uh you know i think we all start out and we want 600 you know 650 and then it just progresses and i think you made a huge jump going from that to you know, 1800 how would you describe you know the 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 difference with having a common rail engine and the setup that you have with the injectors the cp3s the live tuning for <clears throat> kind of that uh, that drivability not that's going to necessarily tow, but just when you're on the track, or you're sled pulling, what does it allow you to do that, um, you know, th- that you really enjoy with, say, how the power comes on, how you're able to, you know, data log and see different things and maybe have your tuner update things or give you a little bit more here, a little bit more there? Yeah. So, I mean, the earlier Fords, um, I mean, their tuning wasn't the greatest i mean the the power before was i mean it was kind of lethargic you'd wait for the turbos to or turbo to come in you'd see a big puff of black smoke and it would clean up and it go versus a common rail uh i mean it's just they're so smooth they run great the the idle haze is n- nearly perfect at i mean t- i mean even with 500 percent, i mean it's there's almost nothing coming out the exhaust it's, it's just clean I mean, you can throw a quick data log on it, just hit go, and your tuner can see almost everything that they need to see. Um, especially with Firepunk, I mean, they're 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 brilliant when it comes to tuning. They really, they really are. They've, I mean, this is a you know the lowest the truck will make is a little over eleven hundred horsepower. It's almost smoke free. I will tell anyone, you know. I'll put you in two and five in my truck and you can go to the grocery store in it and you, you wouldn't know the difference until you, you know, you put the, the pedal down, but like you honestly don't need that much power. <laughs> <laughs> um, not many people do, but I mean, it's fun. It's a conversation piece. I mean, you give people rides and the smiles on their face is worth the money, the busted knuckles, the cursing. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, it's great. They, they really are. It's, it's a great platform. Now with the transmission, I don't remember from our previous episode, if you stuck with like an E4OD or 4100, or you went to a 48 RE, but you know, jumping up from 900 to 1800, what's the transmission setup like? So with the 7.3, um, it was a Brian's truck shop transmission. I mean, it was a great 800 ish horsepower trans. Um, I mean, I, I pushed that very same trans to, you know, 1200 horsepower, 1300 horsepower with the five, nine. And I mean, it started to turn a little slushy and then, um, it started having some funny shifts. So we took it apart and it, it had pretty much welded all the forward gears, uh, pretty much the whole stack up was welded together. It was pretty gnarly. So, um, I didn't have a great relationship with BTS. Um, I, I just, I wanted a more personal relationship. So uh sam weiss was uh definitely up and growing in the ford transmission uh community 
I had a few buddies running it and, um, I got a hold of him. I mean, and he, I, I told him my goals and he, he provided, man. I mean, it's a stage four Sam Weiss, uh, E4OD and it has taken every single beating I can give this thing. Um, I just pulled the trans out after almost two full years with the enforcer and the only issues so far is overdrive i can't quite keep the power so i gotta i gotta tame it back on overdrive as far as like dino wing but like on the street it's fine so i mean the dino i, I try swing for a number for the crowd just to keep the things interesting but um i mean the fluid is is perfect there's nearly nothing in the pan i mean it's it's everything you can want for in a trans i mean it, honestly at this power level yeah <clears throat> and being able to hold up to dinos and sled pulling and drag racing and do it for for two years says a lot now you had um you had left off with going to king of the street challenge in, in 2021 from then till now have you made more changes to the truck or has it stayed pretty much the same um fuel side is all pretty much the same i like to keep playing with turbos i like to i mean tur small turbos spool fast they make torque torque breaks things um i've recently just took taken the 85 off i put a i'm trying a new brand of turbos out by pulsar uh it's a ball bearing 88 um they've got a bigger turbine option as an s400 uh it's got a big exhaust housing it's like a 152 uh, T6 and it, it spools really, really well for like considering how large that is. I mean, most people are starting to get into spool jets. I mean, um, this thing comes up on the, the turbos by 2200 RPM. I mean, I, I can bump into a light in literally seconds. So usually when I'm at the track and I'm racing, I'll, um, I'll let someone bump in first because this thing is, it's so efficient. It comes up so quick. We can just hit the beams and just go. So I mean, there's, there's no drama. It's nice. nice. But um, other than that, I mean, it's honestly, it's got uh, pretty much the same water to air intercooler I've had on it for a while. It's, it's two type fives welded together. Um, that works great. I mean, it's a, it's kind of a lot of maintenance, a lot of ice, go through tons of ice, <laughs> bring lots of coolers. But I mean, your intake air temps, almost never go over 100 degrees at by the big end of the track it, it's super impressive but i mean same trans pretty much uh same motor turbos um there is a on three performance 107 in front of the 88 um i mean the whole, the whole package works really well now do you think that um the power that you're at now is it do you think you're going to want more in the future like you did when you were at 700, 900, 1300? And you know, maybe down the road you might want to get over that two number, maybe 2500? Or are you you're just kind of enjoying it where it's at right now? I'm kind of just enjoying it. Um, the 2000 horsepower number was so cool. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I teared up. <laughs> I, I never thought I would have a vehicle that could compete on that kind of level and, and do it well. Um I think 2,200 horsepower would be pretty cool. But, I mean, it's just nitrous from here. My kind of ultimate goal with this motor was 2,000 on fuel, which is kind of hard to do. So I'm kind of just playing it by ear, but, I mean, I'm just enjoying it. I have almost no issues with it. Like I said, there still isn't even a drip of oil on the ground. It's it's hard to obtain that with a diesel. <laughs> Now, with, with events, what are some events you go to? I know you'd mentioned King of the Street Challenge, but um, you know, are there ones you definitely like to make sure that you go to throughout the year and see people at and, and compete in? So this year I've been kind of bad with going to events. Um, I mean, I went down to Atlantic City Truck Meet um, a few weeks back in New Jersey. Um, that was kind of just like a, a really big, um, I mean, I guess it's almost like SEMA over here. It's just like all the wild, crazy truck builds uh, and meat. But I mean, there was really just a dyno. I mean, we had, we had a really good, great crowd going. Uh, a lot of great conversations. I mean, that's kind of the only event I've been to this year. Um, there is uh, Diesels of New York I want to go to in a couple weeks. So I'll, I'll definitely be up there for that. That's a two-day 
uh, by smoke and speed as well. So I'm looking forward to that. And then it's kind of just make sure she's not broken for King of Street 2022. Nice. I did see on uh, Instagram that you tow it with a, uh, a really clean six, seven power stroke. And I know a lot of guys do that. You have your, you know, 1500, 2000, 2500 horsepower or higher truck and you're towing it with something. How have you, have, how have you enjoyed that truck? Has it treated you well? Um, you know, what, uh, what are some, some feedback that you could give listeners if they're looking for, um, uh, one of the newer diesel trucks to, to tow with? Um, <clears throat> if it were me, I would do it all over again. Uh, I have a 2020 uh, F350 and I bought it peak COVID. So I, I got a, a decent deal. Um, dealers weren't, the market wasn't what it was. I mean, everything was low. So I trade in, I had a 18, I traded in, I got kind of taken back on a little bit there. I mean, they, they really gouged me for trading value, but um I, I was ecstatic to have this truck. I mean, I was like, I'm kind of making it in the world. <laughs> this is a, a brand new truck to me. Um, the 2020s had uh, a little bit of a change in the high pressure system, uh, steel pistons. The turbos were a little bit different. The emission system's a little bit different. Um, overall, I mean, so far I'm 38,000 miles into this truck. It tows phenomenal. You have passing power. Um, no regen issues it's unloaded it's about 18 to 19 highway cities about 16 to 17 uh towing you're anywhere from you know 10 to 12 miles per gallon um not one issue not one check engine light uh nothing i mean it's just you hook up and go i mean it's the truck doesn't have the easiest life i mean it looks good but it definitely (laughs) has a trailer on it by the you know, on the weekends. <laughs> I think that's what everyone who gets a truck to tow with wants. They, they don't want check engine lights. They just want to be able to drive it, go, <laughs> not have yeah. to worry about it. And the, the six, seven Fords are definitely a really popular option. And they, I mean, they look great. And <clears throat> with the updates they've done throughout, you know, that engine's life, it's, it's really cool to see, you know, how, how far it's come on, uh, you know, it's a big question, you know, people ask is which newer truck should I get? In? And they're all really, if we think back, like they're all really fantastic. They all have tons of power, tons of, uh, you know, creature comforts. And it's so hard to pick one versus like, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. Yeah. You could really see a lot of differences between trucks. Yeah. Um, I had come from in, in 18. So, I mean, 11 to 18, they were all pretty much the same thing in the engine bay. Uh, the 2020s and up got all the right things as far as honestly, they've got enough power. It's reliable enough. You don't have to tune and delete. It's a real sore subject. I mean, being in the diesel repair and performance industry, you know, everyone still asks about, you know, why, why haven't you deleted it yet? I mean, honestly, you could throw a tune on this thing, emissions friendly. Um, you're well over 500 horsepower. I mean, the factory ratings, you're tickling 500 horsepower. It's, it's more than enough. It it should satisfy, you know, probably 90% of the market. I mean, 25,000 pounds behind this thing, you're comfortable. You're, you're happy. The truck's in a sweet spot. Um, anything you can need in a tow vehicle. I mean, these things are so capable now it's anyone can drive them. It's great. Yeah, and the, well, the power levels are at, you know, if we think back to like a 12 valve or a VP44 truck or even the 5.9 common rails, guys would spend, you know, money to be able to get it to 450, 500. And, you know, and then you're digging into the transmission because you're definitely going to need one. Yeah. And then all the other things, whereas these trucks now, it's like they're almost right there. And then you just put a tune on it and it can just be mild. And it's like, it just, I think now it, it, I can't say trucks have peaked, but they've just come so far with power. The options are amazing. The comfort of them, the tow ratings, the payload, everything like that. So I was really curious, you know, like to, like I said, to get your opinion on towing your, your uh, Ford OBS with the enforcer motor with the six, seven power stroke, what your impressions are. <laughs> yeah, I would, um, I would do it all over again. I honestly would. Um, my wife actually has a very similar truck. We, uh, will tow a camper with that one or just pick hers, bring that, uh, the trailer to the track with that truck. 
that's a 250 and that toes incredible i mean i i couldn't rate them any better um you know like you said you had to do tuning and turbos and to the older trucks and then with tuning comes smoke and it's just you you don't need that anymore i mean i'm a horsepower junkie obviously you you can tune these trucks you know legally now and not have to worry about passing smog or lights on the dash or uh, possible dot checks from deleting and you know because that stuff's kind of getting the band hammer drop down where i am in uh, the new jersey pennsylvania area but i would um you know for what these things have to offer um definitely recommend now for anyone who's who's listening they want to check out your truck see what you're doing they might have a, a question they might be wanting to go down this road yeah here pretty soon with with uh you know doing a swap or just making more power where can they find you on instagram uh at the ppe common rail um that's pretty much just for the truck so it, it's test drives it's uh some mexico stuff uh dyno you know it, it's it's a little bit of everything and um i mean it's it's probably worth the check out i mean last time we talked i had a whole bunch of people reach out um questions on instagram you know hey i listened to your podcast it's i, I love the truck or i've followed it uh I, I gave out a ton of advice and i mean that is really worth it for me um it makes what i do i mean even better so i mean any questions honestly anyone can reach out i mean i love that stuff Awesome. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the, the powers of like, you know, chatting with you about your build processes. There's dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of people <clears throat> that are in either similar situations where they've taken their seven, three, as far as they feel they can, they want something different or they have a five, nine and they're wanting to go from 14 to 18 and they'll probably have questions about your turbos or um, your tuning yeah. or different things like that. And just spreading that education and that experience is incredibly important. And I always enjoy our chats. It was fantastic to chat with you today, catch up on the truck. And also get your your feedback on having a you know twenty twenty six seven how that's doing for you. So I appreciate your time, Stephen, and uh, look yeah. forward to you know, following the truck more and seeing what you do with it. Absolutely, thanks, man. Don't forget, diesel fans, make sure and head on over to Kershaw.kiausa.com. You can save twenty percent off site wide on any of the products they have. So if you need a knife for everyday carry, hunting, fishing, around the house, at work, job site, got a ton of choices for really any budget that's out there. So we appreciate them um, being a sponsor of the podcast and helping our listeners save some money. Also, want to give a shout out to some of our Patreons, Rights Diesel Supply. Tyler Lowen at 23 Diesel and Caleb. We appreciate their support, the support of all of our Patreons. All of you subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the podcast apps out there. We uh, we love hearing from you guys, seeing what you guys are doing. Our Discord, there's a lot of great information and builds and things that are being shared there. So you guys keep us going, keep us uh, keep the creativity flowing um, with content, stories to bring you guys. So we just wanted to thank you for listening to us all these years and look forward to bringing you guys even more content and truck talk that you want to hear. Until next time, keep the shiny side up.